Hey everyone, in this video I am going to show you that how we can find SQL injection vulnerabilities by performing Google Docs or by finding sensitive information using Google. So let's get started. Before that, if you haven't checked out our, my previous video in which I have shown you some of the ways and some of the techniques through which you can uh, improve your bug bounty automation, then do check that out and let's get started. Also, if you are a bug bounty hunter, and you want to increase your account takeover skill and if you want to inc increase your bug bounty skill then do check out this website which is bepractical.tech where we have some account takeover labs based on real world scenarios so as you can see here we have labs so all of these labs are based on real world cases and each lab is very unique compared to the other labs let me show you that so as you can see this is the application and you need to hack this admin's account so do check this out if you want to increase your account takeover skill now let's get back to the video so for example let me close all this and let's say that this target this is our target this domain is our target and we need to find sql injection so you have to understand that in order to find sql injection you need to uh, find a parameter uh, any parameter maybe a get parameter or a post parameter that is somehow interacting with the database right whether it is fetching the data or it is storing the data like you can see sign up functionality is used to store data in it right similar we have login function login functionality that is used to uh, compare data to the database so it is also indirectly dealing with the database right so these are some functionalities where you have to test sql injection right so let us try to gather all the possible urls of this particular domain so i'm going to copy this and let's do a simple google doc site and let's say i want to find php related urls and it should contain something like question id equals some id parameter so let's hit enter and as you can see we got some urls we got only two urls out of this particular domain that have this id parameter as you can see in the bottom right so let's open any one of this so as you can see this is the application and let's try to modify each uh, number and see what happens so as you can see whenever i am changing the id value so according to the id it is fetching the data using that id parameter right so when i hit enter and when i provided this id so in the back end there will be a query that is fetching the data of that particular id right and it is displaying back to us so here is some kind of interaction with the database now to find sql injection manually you need to some do something like this simply you have to put a single quote or a double quote and see how the, how the web application behaves. So let me provide one. So as you can see, if I provided a single quote, then the data gets changed, right? And if I provide a double quote, as you can see, data is again got changed. So in the background, in the back end, something like this will happen. So it's something like this. So select star from a database where id equals to that particular id that id so something similar to this is going on so what we need to do is we need to break out of this id parameter so if i do something like this and type something like this let's say so as you can see it is again showing me the data so this is not how the uh, application is working so we need to tweak it some more so let me show you what i mean by that so think what will happen that instead of this query and here we can provide our this id parameter so this id parameter is getting in this query now let's say there is a query select star from database where id equals to and we provided that id so four uh, seven five seven two right and what if i supply more than just id like if i supply something like this and sleep 5 so sleep is an inbuilt function of mysql which uh, sleeps which temporarily stop the database for the given amount of seconds so if i type this and if it get executed then something like this will happen 
so this and this and keyword will execute this query as well as this query so if it is vulnerable then our uh, this website will sleep for 5 seconds let's see and as you can see the website is still loading which means that we were able to execute the sleep command which means that this website is indeed vulnerable right and to confirm this we can use one more trick like we can specify something like this and 1 equals to 1 so we know that 1 equals to 1 is already true because 1 is equals to 1 right but if i type 1 equals to true then 1 is not equals to true so, so this statement is false so if I type something like this 1 equals to 1 and see what happens as you can see we successfully got the data because this query and this query is successfully executed because this query in the backend also returned true so that it the backend understand that okay this query has been executed successfully and this query after and is also executed so because both of these are uh, returning and uh, returning true therefore we get the data as we expected but if I type something like this oh yeah one equals to true which we know is false then as you can see the data got completely changed which means that it is not executed so from here we can also confirm that our sql injection is indeed working right so this is the way to identify an sql injection in any web application so i hope you have understood that how we can find and how we can identify sql injection if you have any doubts if you have any issues then please let me know in the comment section thanks for watching